Hey guys, check it out. They just dropped off the brand new Grand Cherokee L and here's the key. This is what it looks like. And in this video, we're gonna go completely through it. We're gonna talk about styling. We're gonna talk about the interior and we're gonna take it for a ride. Now, if you've been following TFL, you'll note that Tommy has already gotten behind the wheel of this. I haven't, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna discover it together, just me and you. And we're gonna go over all the features, of course, we're going to go through the Monroney, take a look at the price. So let's get right to it. And let's start with where everybody starts with, and that is, of course, styling. And you'll note the front, of course, has a traditional seven-slotted grille. But like the Wagoneer, the front is cantilevered forward a little bit. So now it kind of, well, it kind of, kind of jumps out at you. Uh, and whenever a vehicle is very successful, like the Grand Cherokee, usually the designers become more evolutionary than revolutionary. So let's kind of take a walk around it, give you a three quarters view, and you'll see a very distinct family resemblance to the outgoing Grand Cherokee. And that's because, well, they know that this car is successful. They know that you guys like it. So why mess with success? One of my favorite features is right here. Let me show you. Jeep has now, of course, gone all in on patriotism and so you'll see a little american flag right there done up in silver and well just silver actually uh to let you know that this is an american vehicle because well let's face it the brand has been bought and now the company that owns it is called Stellantis. it's a partnership with peugeot and i think that they're really trying to stress their american roots the other thing you'll notice is that this is the trail rated version so this has all the off-road goodies uh, this is, in fact, the Overland version, which means we're looking at one of the more expensive versions of this. Now, if you talk to the people behind Jeep, they'll tell you that they actually designed the two-row version of this first, but then all of a sudden, the people higher up said, you know what, we need the three-row. And so the Grand Cherokee L, which this is, has been introduced before the two-row. So we'll take a look at the third seat and we'll, third row, and we'll see how actually a person that's pretty big and 6'2 fits back there. Let's look at the back. I think if you were to look at this from behind, you'd have a hard time telling it apart from the current uh, Grand Cherokee. It's very similar. The coolest part, I think, is right there. You've got your exhaust pipe uh, that is actually in this bezel, so it's not fake. The Germans have decided that kind of faking those exhausts is the thing to do. I love the fact that the Americans are still going with a real exhaust coming out of a real bezel. Uh, let's look at the back row uh, and how much room there is behind it. So double click twice. There's the L, it'll open up. And like I say, me and you are discovering this together. So this is the first time I've actually looked back here. You know, it's a good amount of space. I mean, let's face it, if you want the big uh, vehicle, you're gonna go for the brand new Wagoneer or Grand Wagoneer. This is of course um, the one that I think most people will buy just because it's very popular. Under here is a little bit of a cubby. That's nice, uh, nothing dramatic. And what's over here? Look at that. I think that is the jack. Let's make sure and discover it together. Yep, that's very tidy, nicely done. So we've got a little jack and then we've got some space. And of course, this being the top of the line Overland edition, you've got these little buttons which will activate the seats. I don't want to put them down right now electrically uh, because, well, I want to sit back there. So actually, in order for me to sit back there, let's put these up so I can actually get my head back there. And of course, there should be a button, and with Jeeps, it's always right there. This is interesting. Come on over. Hold the set. And that, of course, means that you can set the height at which you want this tailgate to open. So if you have a low garage, you don't slam your tailgate into the top of the garage. It's a nice feature. So let's close it. Now, I do want to point out an interesting feature. On the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, the most controversial thing that they've done is they've taken... Uh, the C pillar and the B pillar, these two pillars right here, right? It goes A, B, C, and they've made them body colored. So on a wagon, Grand Wagoneer, this would be silver. And it's certainly very distinct and different. In the Grand Cherokee, it's very traditional in that it's black. Uh, and so some people like that, some people don't like it. But here you've got the traditional black color on the B and C pillar. Nothing surprising there. The other thing that is surprising about this, though, is just how much it tows. 7,200 pounds, and that's because of what's not just under the hood, but because a lot of people use these as towing rigs, and 7,200 pounds is a lot. So let's look under the hood. Let me go pop it open.
Now this Grand Cherokee, uh, I'll tell you the price at the end of this, has the optional 5.7 liter Hemi under the hood. You can see 5.7 liter Hemi produces about 360 horsepower and it's gonna pair to uh, Jeep's ubiquitous eight speed automatic transmission. Um, it's a $3,300 option. Uh, and if you want power and if you want a Hemi and if you wanna be American, then of course that is the power plan to get. Um, the other interesting thing I noticed right away is this being the top of the end, top of the line model, lots of chrome, right? You've got chrome. I do like these headlights. They've kind of stretched them out, kind of made them a little bit thinner, giving kind of that more aerodynamic look. Uh, chrome accents here. And of course, being trail rated, you have to have recovery points. And since this is the top of the line model, this recovery point is chrome covered. And I do like these little uh, tiny uh, LED fog lamps pretty cool also this has the off-road package so we're looking at Goodyear Wranglers not you know horribly off-roady but certainly with enough tread and enough depth uh, to be able to take this on a dirt road I don't think people are going to take this model even with the off-road package up anything crazy like Moabby but nevertheless very good grippy tire let's get behind the wheel yeah. I really think this is where, uh, start it up. I really think this is where Jeep and Stellantis shine. They've really upped their interior game. Now I'm looking at a lot of interesting uh, wood, a lot of interesting leather, French stitching, beautiful, almost waterfall-like big screen, really nice and chunky steering wheel, secondary display here, and of course, don't know if you're a fan of this, but I'm getting used to it. A rotary knob for selecting drive. Now, the first thing I immediately am struck by is these two little pads right here. Uh, obviously, this one lowers and raises the car, gives you full access to air suspension. And of course, over here, you've got different drive modes. And this being a Jeep, you have rock, sand, mud, snow, auto, and sport. And of course, you also get the four wheel low range so this is a proper off-roader uh, but at, let's take a look at the price well let's take a look at the first price it starts at fifty four thousand dollars but when you add in well let's talk about some of these packages like the advanced pro tech group which includes a heads-up display uh, and an intersection collision assist system when you add the off-road group that's another thousand dollars which gives you things like you know the tires we just talked about an electronic slip rear locking diff, a fuel tank skid plate, a transfer case skid plate, uh, front suspension skid plate, and of course the $3,300 5.7 liter heavy, you end up with a price as tested of 67,210, which puts it you know, in direct competition with vehicles like the new Defender, uh, which started about 55,000. The one we have at the office, by the way, we'll compare this to that off-road as well. So we'll do a direct comparison between this and the Defender. That one was 77, but at 67,000, you can get yourself a pretty nice Defender. The other big number, of course, here is 17 uh, combined MPG. Not exactly terrific, but if you want the big Hemi, you're going to end up, you know, with great power comes great thirst. <laughs> and that's the number that you end up with. So let's keep talking about the interior. Uh, Obviously, this is a loaded version of it, so you've got things like heated and um, cooled. I think these are cooled. They may just be vented seats. You also have your um, steering wheel uh, that's heated. A lot of these um, controls are now touch sensitive, so obviously no real buttons. Uh, the one that's kind of interesting is this one right here. It's the climate button. You hit that, and then you can slide the little bar uh, to whatever desired temperature you can just go down by degrees and then of course activate the uh, um, seats as well or the steering wheel heating controls uh, this latest version of uconnect is uh, sharper crisper uh, so let's see if i can figure out like uh, navigation that should be very sharp when it comes up it's taking a little bit there we go look at that and you can see we're in boulder um, really good let's see what the vehicle control does we're learning this together guys yeah, so you've got uh, third roll headrest fold. I just put them up so I don't want to fold them. Rear view camera, let's see what that's like. 
it's okay. You know, the way you can really tell if a camera is any good isn't in the daytime, but it's at nighttime to see if uh, it starts to get pixelated. So I'm gonna reserve judgment on this. Let's go with the front facing camera. So you've got both front and rear facing cameras. You know, I'm learning this along with you and so far it's pretty uh, interesting. Family cam, look at that. <laughs> That's for when you've got the kiddos in the back seat. When are we gonna get there? When are we gonna get there? And you can see if they're actually paying attention or just pretending to be a little naughty while they're doing something that is truly naughty. Uh, but now you can take a look at them. So yeah, it's pretty cool that you've got the family cam. Interesting that there's two views. There's the second row, third row, and then there's, I guess you put the naughtiest kid here, or maybe the best kid, I don't know, but certainly the one that you'll have the most view with. Um, so yeah, that's a very thoughtful feature. Let's try the surround camera. Let's do that one. There we go. Different views. Surround cams are becoming very popular. Uh, they're very good for off-roading. Uh, so it's cool to see that we have a surround cam. Of course, paddle shifters right here. And uh, usually what FCA, well now Stellantis does, is they incorporate little buttons back here and they still have them. So this is a, a Jeep thing where you can control your volume uh, and of course pick your stations based on little buttons behind the uh, paddle shifters, which could be a good or a bad thing. Also time sensitive buttons on the steering wheel. We're looking at, you know, cruise control, lane keep, proximity distance control. Uh, and over here, I'm sure you can, you can toggle through uh, all the different uh, variations that you can have on the main menu. Um, so for instance, uh, now I've brought up my uh, automatic uh, different drive that I have with this off-road. So I've got, you know, full-time four-wheel drive or low range. It's pretty cool. Um, well, look at that. That's our current MPG 13.5. Uh, but don't take that for what we're getting because I've just driven it here to the trailhead. So I don't know exactly how many miles that includes. I also think this tells you uh, your height. So you can see your height and you can see where you are with the four wheel drive system. Overall, uh, it's a very nice place to spend time. I mean, I like the materials. I like the fact that everything I touch is soft. Uh, I like this wood. I think I'd like a little bit more if it was open pour, uh, but nevertheless, I'm assuming that's real wood. That's a dangerous assumption. Uh, that is definitely real plastic. Uh, so I think that's a, that's a fair assumption. Uh, Engine seems very quiet. Steering wheel has wood accent trims. Seats are very comfortable. Uh, this being the top of the line model, I also get massaging seats, both for myself and for Matt, the videographer. So if Matt, you, how's your back, Matt? You need, uh, could be better. Could be better, yeah. We could we could turn on the massaging seats. But instead of doing that uh, and chilling, let's go in the second row and see what that's like, huh? We've got these uh, captain seats back here, which I think is always a nice touch, with armrests. And then if you look over here, uh, you'll note that we've got our own separate temperature control. So we definitely have four-way or four-zone climate control, including heated seats, uh, which is nice. Uh, automatic, and of course, for the kiddos, whether they're behaving or not, you've got USB and USC, USB-C, yeah, little, um, little uh, ports, uh, speakers. Uh, one of the cool things that this vehicle has is, I don't know, Matt, can you just show them that Macintosh speaker in the front? It's pretty cool. Can you kind of zoom in on it? That's a, that's a pretty cool little speaker, Macintosh system. Uh, you know, I'm pretty comfortable. I would say, you know, with this massive moonroof, it probably cuts a good inch out of head height. So I, I fit back here. I've got legroom. This is where I drive. Uh, not bad always a fan favorite so you can block out the sun or you know the paparazzi if you happen to be one of the famous driving this vehicle uh, and then let me jump in the back seat yeah pop that back let's see how that does can you pop it again Matt see if it'll go back all the way it's got to recline somehow yeah there you go look at that folds and tumbles I bet you hold on let's try let's, oh, now we now we did it man here let's, let's try it one more time all right let's see what happens if I just do one one shot come on there we go like that see that's how it works it's out of the way all right let's get the back uh definitely more for the kiddos uh, than for the adults but you know it's not bad i could see if you had to and you had to go to lunch and you know you wanted to be part of the the gang that's going to lunch you could sit back here for that kind of a trip i think any longer than that would be tough 
Uh, but, uh, you know, some headroom, not much legroom. The seats aren't too bolt upright. Uh, and then over here, which is also cool, you can see the controls to actually lower the seat. So uh, we can do it manually or we can do it electronically. There's some thoughtful features, cup holders. Matt, if you show them over here, you've got your uh, power ports, uh, both kind, uh, which is really nice. And then if you go around the outside, there's a little Easter egg right there. Hmm. A little tough to see. Yeah, it's right there, Easter egg. Jeep loves their Easter eggs. I think that's the old Grand Cherokee. Yeah, I think that's enough time back here. <laughs> All right, let's jump in the front seat and take it for a quick ride and see how, how this eight speed performs. I'll just go around and hop in the passenger seat. Yes, I have the key. I know Jeep, I have the key. Right, we'll dial it into drive. Oh, put on the brake, that would help. We won't try the air suspension, I just assume it works. It better work. And uh, very quiet. Probably get a more free, free flowing exhaust if you want it to get a little bit of more hemi rumble, but you know, it's, it's probably right for a family SUV. And let's face it, this is now a very big SUV. That's one of the questions I have. How was Jeep going to kind of distinguish between the Grand Cherokee, the Wagoneer, and the Grand Wagoneer? When you walk into the showroom and you've got all three of these vehicles, and let's face it, the L, the Wagoneer, and the Grand Wagoneer, they're all three-row vehicles. How are you going to choose between them? This, of course, competes more with vehicles like the Explorer, why the Grand Wagoneer competes with vehicles like the Tahoe and of course the Navigator, you know, the big American, uh, big, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say big ass SUVs. Uh, this is one segment down, but now that they've made it a three row, it starts to blur those lines. So it makes it a little bit more, well, I guess there's more choice. You know, I'm always all about choice. So the more choice, the better. Um, driving it, uh, steering is responsive. <laughs> braking it's good linear you know not, nothing grabby and when we first got the uh, defender I took a while to get used to kind of the uh, way that that would uh, grab the brakes it seems very normal uh, of course there's no hybrid model as far as we know yet or no plug-in I'm sure that's coming as well uh, so stay tuned for that if you want to be you know a little bit better than the, what was that 15 mp no 17 mpg combined uh, i'm sure there's the plug-in hybrid coming as well i believe the jeep has actually either announced it or is rumored to be announced but uh, everybody's going that way so no difference uh, the question i have is how quick is this hemi when we give it a little bit of the beans and i've got a little bit of a, a road here uh, that i can uh, give that a shot so we'll pull into the main road here uh let's uh let's stop it and then just floor it I'm not gonna do a 0 60, I just wanna kind of feel the acceleration. All right, we're flooring. There goes the rear seat. Yeah, that's good. You're not gonna break any uh, land speed records, uh, but it's certainly no slouch. Uh, you know, by my uh, butt meter, and over the last 11 years I've been doing this, I've gotten pretty good. Keep in mind we're at a mile above sea level, but it's probably a seven to eight second car, something like that. Um, probably a little bit quicker if you're down at sea level, uh, but not bad. You know, you, it'll certainly get out, get out of the way. And with a towing capability of 7,200, that's a lot of weight that you can put behind this. I think it'll tow, you know, your horse trailer, easily tow your boat. You know, we're getting into that almost like full-size pickup truck range when we start to tow between seven and let's say 8,000. Um, the Defender tows, I think, just a tad more. It's pretty amazing that now these kind of full-size SUV slash crossovers are getting into pickup truck towing range. Uh, and that's good. That's good because it gives you a choice. Uh, you know, in the past I would have said, if you want to tow, get a truck. But with 7,200, if you want to tow your boat, they're usually around, depending on the boat, of course, around 6,000. I think this will handle it. But we will definitely do a towing test. Uh, so just to let you know what's coming, uh, we're going to 
compare this to our Defender since we have one at the office. So that video is coming and that's where we're going to actually do the off-road test. So we're going to take them both up uh, Tombstone uh, and see how they perform. Uh, and then we'll take the keys and uh, turn it over to our friend Andre uh, and hopefully do some towing even though that may not be doable. I didn't look at this have the tow package or not. Uh, because if it doesn't have the tow package then obviously we're not going to be towing. Like I say, sorry it's a limb prompt too. They just dropped it off at the office. But if it does have a tow package in other words, if we have a hitch uh, and the wiring for it, then we will definitely uh, hook it up and, and, you know, tow with it. All right, well, let's wrap this up outside. I'll give you my initial impression. I'll let you know on the, on the TFL scale of buy, lease, and rent it, or forget it, what you should do. All right, I lied. I'm not going to let you... Uh, I'm not going to tell you whether you should buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, just because, you know, I think it's too early. I'd like to spend, we get these vehicles for a week, so I'd like to spend some time behind the wheel. I want to take it off-road, uh, and then maybe one of the other videos, obviously the off-road video is going to be over at TFL Off-Road. The towing video, that'll probably be here over, that'll probably be on car. Um, but uh, I'm going to wait and reserve judgment till I've spent a little bit more time with it. Guys, thank you for kind of joining me on this first drive slash review uh initial impressions are very good i uh, love the interior i think they've done just the right thing in terms of styling uh certainly there is plenty of room in the back for somebody who's you know bigger uh certainly there's plenty of room for a family uh so all signs are looking good as always this is roman reporting for the fast lane car check out tflcar.com for more news views and of course your very first impression of the brand new Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland. See you guys next time. Ciao.